Hello Geography class. In this video, I'm going to talk about the use and regulation of pesticides. Specifically, we're going to focus on the widespread use of DDT in the 1940s and 50s. I'm going to tell you what it is, what it does, and how even the best intentions can go horribly wrong. I'll present the circumstances and details leading up to the environmental disaster and what's being done to remedy the lasting and indirect effects. The Food and Agriculture Organization defines pesticides as follows. Any substance or mixture of substances intended for preventing, destroying, or controlling any pest, including vectors of human or animal disease, and unwanted species of plants or animals. Whether or not you like the sound of that, there's no denying that pesticides have been enormously beneficial to mankind. Most importantly, they control pest and plant disease vectors, improving crop and livestock yields and quality. They control invasive species and geographically contain diseases. Moreover, pesticides control organisms that harm human activities and structures. The general public also benefits from the use of pesticides in the control of insect-borne diseases and illnesses. Today, every dollar that is spent on pesticides for crops yields four dollars in additional crops. This means that $10 billion spent per year on pesticides garners an additional $40 billion in savings from crops that would have been lost to insects and weeds. In general, farmers benefit from having increased yield and being able to grow a variety of crops throughout the year. Consumers also benefit from being able to afford the vast quantities of produce available year-round. That doesn't sound so bad. What could possibly go wrong? Let's meet the big bad granddaddy of modern pesticides, DDT. Dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane is a colorless, tasteless, and nearly odorless organochloride known for its insecticidal properties. DDT's insecticidal tendencies were discovered by the Swiss chemist Paul Hermann Müller in 1939. Later, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his discovery of the high efficiency of DDT as a contact poison against several arthropods. DDT seems to literally drive bugs crazy. So what it does is it opens sodium ion channels in insect neurons, causing them to fire spontaneously, which leads to spasms and eventual death. In order to understand the obsession with DDT, we need to understand what people were up against. Malaria is a mosquito-borne infectious disease caused by parasitic protozoans. Malaria's symptoms include fever, fatigue, vomiting, and headaches. The disease is transmitted by a mosquito bite, and if left untreated, people may have reoccurrences of the disease months later. In severe cases, it can cause yellow skin, seizures, coma, or death. Evidence suggests that it is a cause of poverty and a major hindrance to economic development. Thus, DDT was recruited in the second half of World War II to control the insect transmission of diseases among civilians and the military. Malaria was the most important health hazard encountered by U.S. troops in the South Pacific, where about 500,000 men were infected. DDT, combined with strenuous other methods, was used extensively by the Allies and played an important role in the final elimination of malaria, typhus, and dengue fever in Europe and North America. In 1955, the World Health Organization commenced a program to eradicate malaria, relying largely on DDT for mosquito control. The program was initially highly successful, eliminating the disease in Taiwan, much of the Caribbean, the Balkans, parts of North Africa, the northern region of Australia, and a large swath of the South Pacific. After the war, DDT exploded onto the domestic stage. It begins with the war-born development of DDT. This diabolical weapon of modern science saved millions of humans, but killed billions of insects. Man, with this newly discovered force, has at long last gained the upper hand in our age-old struggle. In 1945, it was made available to farmers as an agricultural insecticide. It came in almost every conceivable form. Solutions in petroleum distillates, wettable powders, granules, aerosols, candles, vaporizers, and lotions. Production of DDT peaked in 1963 at 82,000 tons per year. More than 600,000 tons, that's more than a billion pounds, were applied in the U.S. Yet, as always, there's a dark side. DDT is a synthetically designed chemical substance that is harmful to plants, animals, and humans. It is a deadly, lingering, violent poison. Surely, no one would willingly expose themselves or their environment to DDT. Even the streams are disinfected. 
Tons of DDT are used in this fight against the dread disease. Again, war has contributed one of its discoveries to save life. So let's talk about the environmental impact. In 1962, the book Silent Spring by American biologist Rachel Carson was published. It cataloged the environmental impacts of indiscriminate DDT spraying and questioned the logic of releasing large amounts of potentially dangerous chemicals into the environment without a sufficient understanding of their effects on ecology or human health. Do you know how long the pesticides persist in the water once they get into it? Not entirely. Do you know the extent to which our groundwater may be contaminated right now by pesticides? We don't know that either. Over 98% of sprayed insecticides reach a destination other than their target species. Drift occurs when pesticides suspended in the air as particles are carried by wind to other areas, potentially contaminating them. In addition, pesticide use reduces biodiversity, destroys habitat, and threatens endangered species. Pests can develop a resistance, often necessitating a greater dose of the pesticide that will cause a worsening of the ambient pollution. DDT is a persistent organic pollutant that is readily absorbed to soils and sediments. Depending on conditions, its soil half-life can range from 22 days to 30 years. Its breakdown products and metabolites DDE and DDD are also highly persistent and have similar chemical and physical properties. This is super important to keep in mind. Unlike test subjects in the laboratory, people and animals are exposed to a variety of chemical conditions in infinite variability. Over decades, as chemicals accumulate in the soil, in the air, or in the body, they can break down or recombine with other material into completely unpredictable substances. Because of DDT's lipophilic properties, it has a high potential to bioaccumulate. DDT, DDE, and DDD magnify through the food chain with apex predators concentrating more chemicals than other animals. Stored mainly in body fat, DDT and DDE are very resistant to metabolism in humans. Their half-lives are up to 10 years. In the United States, these chemicals were detected in almost all human blood samples tested by the Centers for Disease Control in 2005. Since pesticides are not excreted, organisms tend to retain them almost indefinitely. Biological magnification is the process whereby these chlorinated hydrocarbons are more concentrated at each level of the food chain. Among marine animals, pesticide concentrations are higher in carnivorous fish and even more so in the fish-eating birds and mammals at the top of the ecological pyramid. It caused eggshell thinning and resulted in severe population declines in multiple North American and European bird of prey species. Eggshell thinning lowers the reproductive rate by causing egg breakage and embryo deaths. DDT-related eggshell thinning is considered a major reason for the decline of the bald eagle, brown pelican, peregrine falcon, and osprey. Even in 2010, more than 40 years after the U.S. ban, some studies show that eggshell thickness remains 10 to 12 percent thinner than before DDT was first used. A Lancet review of epidemiological studies concluded that DDT causes cancers of the liver and pancreas. The International Agency for Research on Cancer classifies DDT as a possible human carcinogen, and the EPA classifies DDT, DDE, and DDD probable carcinogens. A 2007 case control study using archived blood samples found that breast cancer risk was increased five-fold among women who were born prior to 1931 and who had high serum DDT levels in 1963. Silent Spring was a bestseller and public reaction to it launched the modern environmental movement. The year after it appeared, President Kennedy ordered his science advisory committee to investigate Carson's claims. The report the committee issued, quote, added up to a fairly thoroughgoing vindication of Rachel Carson's Silent Spring thesis. DDT became a prime target of the growing anti-chemical and anti-pesticide movements.